This episode of Last Lap brings you the 4-2 Cup in association with Smarts for You Racing. Performance parts for Smarts. Welcome along to Rockingham, the venue for the first programme in our 2013 series of Last Lap. Today some racing that sees small light cars, which are tremendous fun to drive. It's the 4-2 Cup, the Varama Smart Cars in action, very popular in Europe, catching on here in the UK as well. So you're probably asking why we're covering these cars. These are great pieces of kit. Let's take a look at the tech spec. It's a one litre engine producing an incredible 130 brake horsepower. Now, of course, when the car's uprated like that, you need the safety mods. Full rate suspension, uprated brakes, roll cage, of course, mandatory in any race car. And this series is proving very popular with people in the UK moving up from cars. In fact, we've got a kart driver qualified, Ashley Craig's qualified on the front row of the grid. There he is in orange. Let's take a look at that grid. Pole position today going to Theo Berg, Ashley Craig alongside, then it's Paul Bates and David Nash, James Palmer on the inside of row three with Rob Baker next to him, Silvano Cara is next to Damien Villay and then it's Chris Gill and David De Costa at the back of the field. Now the grid, you'll see some other cars on the grid, we're part of the British Racing and Sports Car Club and sharing the grid this weekend with the Euro Saloon and Sports Car Championship and race three is being shared with the Alfa Romeo, so you will see a variety of cars on track, but we're very much focusing on the 4-2 Cup, and there in pole position is Theo Berg, the black, red and white car, and there's actually another similarly uh, liveried car on the grid as well, which we'll try not to get confused with, but that's the Rob Baker car, 461 and 462 are the two numbers. Now the cars are coming out now on their rolling lap from the link road from the infield section onto turn four on the main straight the Euro saloons get away and now it's the turn of the smart cars and a cracking start by Ashley Craig from the front row of the grid I'm pretty sure he didn't jump the start but he was very quick on the throttle as they go down through turn one for the first time there's the car of Rob Baker that I mentioned similar livery car but his teammate is through on the inside as they go up towards Dean and it's Theo Berg that leads, so Ashley Craig's position at the front of the field now, a spin from the Euro Saloons, and that's something that the smart drivers are going to have to deal with. Now, later on, of course, the performance levels on the cars, if you look at the other um, cars that are racing, they've all got aero packages on, so through the course of this race, which is going to be 20 minutes or so, standard fare for the BRSCC, then the, obviously the cars with the, the bigger tyres and aero are going to get involved in lapping these. So that's something the smart car drivers have to think about, have to deal with. So we'll see some pretty good racecraft, I'm sure, through the course of the race. And at the moment, excellent racecraft from Theo Berg, who has built a big lead in these early stages ahead of Ashley Craig. It's Paul Bates in green in third place. And there's another green car coming into the mix as well, which is David De Costa. And in between them, it's Silvano Cara, who looks up the inside as they go into Tarzan, a corner name that will be familiar to our Benelux drivers. Although, of course, the Tarzan they're familiar with is, is at the Zandvoort circuit, where, incidentally, the European smart racers do uh, contest races. And this is actually the first time for the championship here at Rockingham and the first time with the British Racing and Sports Car Club. So a few firsts being ticked off this weekend as Kara looks up the inside of Paul Bates. Very neatly executed move back onto the main circuit at turn four but it's Theo Berg still in front Kerr in third as across the line then Paul Bates David De Costa is following them James Palmer goes through need to keep your eyes open for David Nash as well car number 37 usually races car seven 
and we're looking at the moment at the battle for third place so Silvano Kera out front at the moment there's Ashley Craig going through shot I mentioned that he's done some karting uh, he's actually a university student racing with the British universities karting and this is an ideal step for drivers like that or anyone that wants to come into motor racing because these cars are absolutely superb fun to drive and they've got some, some serious mechanics in them of course which we, we saw in the tech spec and the most important thing is they're fun to drive but the racing's exciting here we come down looking down steel straight steel straight of course named after the uh, heritage if we can call it that of the rocky circuit it was built on an old steelworks corby of course famous for steelworks over the years and then they come around graceland's corner and head down towards tarzan where we have our, our camera placed at the moment and we're seeing whether david verlaine can make up uh, sorry david Tacosta can make up any more places there is the 37 car of David Nash, the 41-year-old from Redditch, works in IT training, so gets his excitement away from work, coming and racing cars, and he's, he's been with the 4-2 Cup from the start. James Palmer in the mix as well, car number three. Another 41-year-old comes to Woodford Green, and looking at the inside line here. Now he was thinking about a move through the Brook Asses, and now puts the Stars and Stripes livery car up the inside. This should be a pass as they go into turn one. So James Palmer, the owner of Smarts View Racing, goes through. Done well in racing, James, over the year. Won a class in the Brick Car Series in the BMW back in 2002. And showing some good race craft there. Good clean racing, as you'd expect from these cars. They're going down towards the Dean Hairpin. This is the first quarter after the run around Turn 1. That's David DeCosta closing up, the second of the green cars. And then David Nash behind him. Nice to have this European flavour with the Belgian drivers coming over and racing with some of the Brits. We've got three events this year in the UK at Snetterton on the 300 circuit, which is going to be very, very well suited uh, to these cars, and also brand, the Brands Indy circuit on the 27th September, sorry, 29th September, and then the Smart Cup in Europe, Zolder in Belgium, Meta and Zandvoort, and the possibility of a 24-hour race at Spa. So the battle for second position on now. And Silvano Kerr goes down the inside at Graceland's. Very nifty move there. I'm not sure Ashley Craig was expecting him to go through and pull away that quickly. And down into Tarzan. So Silvano goes through but gets it all locked up. Lucky not to go further into the gravel. Recovers well. Loses second place. Is he going to lose third as well? Yes, he is. James Palmer goes through into third place. Paul Bates goes through as well, the first container's space-wise trader car. Here's Chris Gill, very good livery, nice fluorescent car, stands out on track. Very good for the circuit commentators, as you can see from the yellow square on the back of the car. A newcomer, that's exactly what this type of racing can be about. It can be for experienced guys who maybe can't afford to race in what they were doing before, or newcomers wanting to try something for fun. Chris is certainly enjoying it. So James Palmer up to third. Paul Bates coming under a little bit of pressure at the moment from the recovering Silvano Cara, who, remember, qualified down in seventh position. So he's made up quite a, quite a bit of space, quite a bit of time over the course of the opening few laps. As too has David DeCosta, but there's a outbreaking himself there is Paul Bates. Bates qualified third. Look how he got punished for that. Now we've got some of the very very powerful sports cars coming through there's Nigel Moore going through Nigel's brother David was a front runner in the 4-2 uh, cup Nigel's younger brother so the Genetta G50 goes through and we focus on James Palmer who's still there but Silvano looks up the inside and he's got a Saker for company as well well, great driving by everybody concerned there you've got to say because the of course the 4-2 cup cars having their own race now, judging by the gap between the other cars, this looks like being the, the, the closer. The other one is a multi-class championship. Now, Bates goes just off, kicks up a bit of dirt down behind James Palmer. In fact, Palmer loses another place. So, from the podium, James has dropped three or four positions. So, we're seeing lots of place trading here, uh, here in this race, which is good to see. It's still Ashley Craig in second. Silvano Cara goes through. There is David DeCosta in fourth ahead of David Nash who runs in fifth place at the moment down school straight let's see whether Palmer can deal with Bates here turns into the first part turns left again some uh, 
one of the Saluda sports cars ahead looking a little bit awry as he went into the Brook S's. Let's see where the Palmer goes for. This is, of course, a repeat of what we saw earlier on. Palmer going to the inside. That's been covered by Bates as they come across the line. So Palmer being not forced, but uh, should we say encouraged to take the outside line. David Nash there in 37. And uh, you can see the smaller three, he normally runs with seven. As we said, there's a um, another car racing number seven in the Euro Saloons. That's Andy Jordan racing in the Renault Clio, if we happen to see it. This is a cracking scrap between James Palmer and Paul Bates at the moment. Palmer trying to get back on terms with him and get past him. Looks down the inside as they go into Edward. Hard on the brakes, but loses a lot of momentum on the way out. Paul Bates will continue to fight another day as we go back now to look at David De Costa, who's having a terrific run, David, at the moment. Right in the mix with the other cars, and in terms of the 4-2 Cup, having a little bit of a breather. So he looks in his mirrors, lets one of the faster cars through. And here's our view from Turn 1. Through again goes the 27 car off Chris Gill. So Theo Berg, 4-6-1, he is our race leader. Qualified uh, very clear of Ashley Craig, who's still running strongly in this race. Up across the line, of course, the smart cars getting the blue flag for the faster class cars going through. Theo with a good lead. Can he hold on to it? Well, join us after the break and we'll see how it pans out. Welcome back to Rockingham. Before the break, we saw Theo Berg, who had a good lead. And this is the driver that he's leading. Second position is Ashley Craig in orange. But he's coming under a bit of pressure from the man who qualified last, David De Costa, running very well indeed. There he is, visiting driver, first time here at Rockingham, and putting pressure on. Now, mindful of the other cars coming through. Ashley Craig goes wide. David De Costa, I think, has seen an opportunity to go up the inside. He's ahead. David De Costa up into second position from last on the grid. Cracking drive from him. Ashley Craig down to third. And is he going to be passed for fourth place? Yes, he is. Through into third goes Silvano Cara. So Ashley Craig not having the happiest of laps. Maybe a little bit of inexperience and with the, with the faster traffic coming through. But we know that he'll be capable of fighting back. We've seen some real fighting in this. And now the battle on for second. David De Costa being chased by... Silvano Cara, Theo Berg still away down the road, still got the fastest lap of the race as well, uh, Theo. And that might be challenged because David, David De Costa is starting to get on the same sort of pace. David De Costa running second, Silvano Cara in third. There they are, coming into Tarzan. One of the first dry days we've had at Rockingham for quite a long while today, so I think the driver's fairly well relieved about that, and they power the way. Second and third place cars power their way along school straight. A very slight uh, climb at the first part of that, and then a slight downhill run into the Brook S's, which is where the cars come now. Rockingham has four or five different configurations of circuit. And this one, the one that's been favoured by organisers over the years. There aren't too many tracks in the UK that have license, different license configurations, Knock Hill's one, you can run anti-clockwise at Knock Hill, Knock Hill. Um, and this is the only anti-clockwise circuit in the UK apart from Knock Hill, although Knock Hill generally runs clockwise. And there's James Palmer still running well, but the top three confirmed as Berg, De Costa and Kara. These guys are a little way down at the moment and Paul Bates still ahead of James Palmer at this moment in time. Put a bit of gap between himself and Palmer. So he's worked hard the last couple of tours and managed to get away. But now James closing right up, under braking as they go up into the Dean Hairpin. Now look at the extra braking he has to do. The car locks up, bounces over the curbs. That really was some brave stuff from James Palmer going into the hairpin. And it seems to have cost him a little bit. He was a long way back, but that was a terrific drive around turn one to close in on Paul Bates. Paul qualified third. He's finding himself a little bit further down the order at the moment. But James Palmer really taking the battle to him. 
up across the line onto the last lap goes the race leader Theo Berg he's, he's built out a huge lead he's got about a 20 second lead over David De Costa there is David in the green car he's actually got the fastest lap of the race so from qualifying down in 10th he's done well there's Ashley Craig following Ashley Craig it's David Nash the black and gold 37 car and you can see the 20 minute race has taken its toll on the uh, sports and saloon cars but all 10 of the 4-2 cup machines are still running let's have a look back there's the third place car at the moment it looks like the top three positions fairly well settled Silvano Kera is going to I think take uh, a podium both him and David De Costa probably didn't qualify as well as they would have liked Theo Berg did, he had that pole position, he was beaten off the line but fought through by the time they got to Dean and the 4-6-1 car is going to take the maiden win of the 2013 season barring any problems on the Brook S's. Silvano Kera closing up again, this is where he had the issue earlier on, still there in third place, Ashley Craig reasonably close in fourth but there's the chequered flag the first win of the year for Theo Berg he opens his account well look at the lead that he's got second position is going to go to David De Costa David through the and Ashley Craig's gone into third he saw a flash of orange just at the back of picture Ashley Craig an inspired last lap coming from many lengths back to go through for third is he going to hang on to the flag well the issue at the moment is David De Costa he takes second and there in orange is Ashley Craig a superb third place Theo Berg takes the win David De Costa second but gets fastest lap Ashley Craig is third then Silvano Kera David Nash fifth from Paul Bates James Palmer in seventh then Rob Baker Damien Vallee in ninth and Chris Gill in tenth Ashley, first round, Rockingham Circuit, how have you found this first race? Yeah, it's been good, uh, started second on the grid, uh, and finished third in the first race, sort of just a little bit cautious, try and get some points, uh, mainly for the championship. Now this car isn't your own car that you normally use, I believe yours is under repair, so uh, tell us a bit about that. Yeah, uh, we did a head gasket at Zolda when we were leading, uh, which is a big shame, we were in the first race, out of two races, so we missed the second race, but uh, no, uh, Simon from Specialised lent us the car for the weekend and so yeah, try and, try and win with it. How are you feeling for the next race? Yeah, next race hopefully we can push a bit harder, we've done a little bit more setup. we got the car, the car hasn't been used for a while so it's mainly just trying to get the best out of it as we could. We tested on Fridays and we did quite well, after the qualifying we were second. So we, each, each time out we just try to improve it bit by bit and I think for the next couple of races we should be alright. Silvano, Rockingham, uh, first race of the season and some, some great racing so far. Seventh on the grid and you finished fourth. How was it from your point of view? Uh, I like very much. It's first time for me uh, here in Rockingham. And uh, yes, it's, it's good. Rockingham as a circuit is quite unusual. It's a banked circuit and left-hander as well. Uh, is there much difference to racing around this to other circuits you do? Uh, Yes, it's a little bit different, but uh, uh, it's easy inside and for me on the speedway with the Belgium cars, uh, left hand drive, it's better of the UK car right hand drive, when the big turn left, uh, it's easy for, for the Belgium car. James, race one done, uh, some great battles there with Paul. Yeah, I had some good fun with Paul. A um, little bit upset, really, because um, I was a little bit further up the field. Um, and it was, Ashley was in front of me, um, and behind it was a bit of a gap. But then all of a sudden, the quick uh, Sakers and uh, the G50 come steaming up. I've sort of backed off a little bit hesitant, and then they all, they all got on me, and then, unfortunately, I managed to get away. The Championship this year goes to some really great circuits, not only in the UK, but also across Europe, and with some very competitive driving from an sort of international field. We've got fantastic circuits, but ones that people just want to tick boxes on. Whether you're driving uh, a little smart car or you're driving a Porsche, things like Spa. Um, we've got a 24-hour Spa coming up. Um, that's just not heard of, really, um, for such a small and cost-effective car. Um, we've also got Zolder that we've done. We've got Matet. We've got 
Zandervolt, is it? I can never pr- yeah. never never pronounce it quite I right. Think it's that, yeah. um, and then we've got some good circuits over here. I think we've, we're in a good position to offer a lot at a very cost-effective price range. I think James is absolutely right. It's some cracking racing to be had. Good circuits. Remember, if you want to come and race in the UK, then we're going to be at Snetterton. Let's have a look at the grid, though. Theo Berg starts on pole position. Then David DeCosta and Ashley Craig, Silvano Kerr and David Nash, Paul Bates and James Palmer, Rob Baker and Damien Villain with Chris Gill starting in 10th place. The grid based on the race result from race one. Now, these cars have got three races this weekend, so this is the second one, so you really do get value for money in the cars. We've got some onboard footage from David DeCosta, who did such a great race in our first event, coming through from the back of the field. He's in the green car, the first of the green cars there on the inside the front row of the grid. Ashley Craig we heard from as well. Silvano Kera in the mix as well. And here they come up across the line to start our second race of the weekend, the race of the season. And it's a cracking start once again from Ashley Craig who gets away well. Paul Bates is up the inside as well. It looks like Theo Berg has got a bit of work to do. Perhaps not so good at the starts, Theo. At the moment, down in fourth position. And James Palmer goes through on the inside. Four wide here at Rockingham. Not too many formulas could do that safely. But these cars can. Look at David DeCosta turning in. Now, this is the advantage. The driver weight is on the inside for the majority of the corners for the Belgian cars. So, of course, when we go to Brands Hatch and Snetterton later on in the season, things are going to change around. Of course, the English guys are going to have the advantage of the weight on the inside, so the setup's going to be a bit easier. But here's De Costa, Theo Berg in front. What a great shot. You can see the car, pretty much the standard car. The, uh, as you'd expect, things like the uh, normal seats, airbags, carpets and all that kind of stuff comes out. Um, original radiator, roll cage are going first. And then the wheels are replaced. We've got Compromotive 15-inch wheels on the cars. Corvo race seat, Luke race harnesses. Fire extinguisher, of course, mandatory will go in and out. Suspension sorted out. Front brakes, and then we're pretty much ready to race. Great cars. The ECUs are remapped, and that produces the 130 brake horsepower that we were talking about at the start of the programme. So Ashley Craig there at the moment, ahead of David De Costa. So seeing a few place changes here on board with David again Ashley Craig in orange up front quick look in the mirrors there from David to check if anyone was behind him such is the close nature of the racing at the moment so Silvano Kerr ahead of Theo Berg looks like a problem for one of the Sakers going off into the into the pit lane just a reminder that all of the cars all of the 4-2 cup cars finished the first race no retirements at all We'll see how that pans out over the course of the rest of the meeting. So it's good value for money in terms of the racing and entries. Three 20-minute races in the BRSCC format, which is really what you want. I think three starts are superb. Now we're going to see Theo Berg start to put a challenge in here. Silvano, there goes Theo Berg on the outside line. Now is he going to get through here? No, he can't quite do it. This is a real brave stuff from Theo. Round the outside, goes onto the curves, and he's got the lead. Round the outside at the hairpin. You don't see that too often here at Rockingham, but with these cars, you can do it. Great action from the 4-2 Cup. Welcome back to Rocking, and we saw Theo Berg retake the lead here with a superb move round the outside at the Dean Hairpin. Silvano Kera is now in second position, and third place is David De Costa, who came through to finish second in the first one. De Costa got the fastest lap, remember, in the first race of the weekend and now finds himself in and it looks like a problem for Ashley Craig I was saying how reliable these cars were and it does look like Ashley has got a bit of a problem that is a great shame and could be our first retirement of the weekend the borrowed car clearly not playing ball at the moment so we'll see whether he can nurse the car around to the pits and maybe get it out for some more laps Theo Berg in front, not building the lead that he had in the first race of the day. It's Silvano Kera still in second position. Silvano trying to close down. I've got to say, looking at the lap times, that things pretty close. Ashley Craig's out of the car safe and well. 
And it looks like things getting a little bit heated in there. Let's hope that he can make it out for the third race of the weekend. Now Theo Berg trying to build a lead, but at the moment Silvano, as we go on board with him, is working very hard. Look how close to the wall they get. And I made the comment in the first part of the programme, one of the um, things about Rockingham is that you have not got that runoff along the home straight or indeed around Turn 1. It's not for the faint-hearted and most circuits in the UK have got, got points that make things a little bit tricky. Still in third place is David da Costa. A little bit of a gap back at the moment to David Nash in 37. And then down behind there, Rob Baker. First look at Rob running in the same colours as the race leader, Theo Berg. Then it's David Nash in car number two, followed by James Palmer. We've got a safety car period here at Rockingham, so the drivers get a little bit of a breather. And whilst things are cleared up, we're about to go racing again. Uh, but this did, did give David DaCosta and Silvano Kerr a chance to close in on the race leader, Theo Berg. Theo's lead wasn't as big as it was in race one. And one of the things I was going to say before the safety car was you saw how all the positions have changed around. This is a very competitive championship. There's no, nothing predictable about the results, particularly from the British guys. And now we get a challenge. Da Costa looks up the inside for second place. Oh, and a spin. Very hard on the brakes for Silvano. Thank goodness it didn't go into the wall. But he's just back on the case straight away. Typical racing driver response, collects it all up. Um, but has lost second position now to David Da Costa, who's very much on the case of Theo Berg. So Theo Berg leads, David Da Costa in second. And Silvano Kera after that spin, has a little bit of work to do. Da Costa, again, the fastest man on track. Brilliant action shot. I mean, these cars really do offer some terrific value for money motor racing and some great fun. As you can see, the cars do buy it. We saw that from Silvano taking the spin. This is the view from David again. Race leader Theo Berg in front, down steel straight, about to head into Graceland's. Left-hand corner before they sweep down towards the right-handed hairpin. One of the slowest corners on the track. Here it is at Tarzan. This is where we saw Silvano get it all crossed up earlier on. He's out of shot at the moment. And the two leaders carry on. Slight incline up school straight past the Rockingham School building. You can come and learn to motor race here. That's why it's called school straight. Number of registered drivers who would be able to uh, take you through your odds test James Palmer looks up the inside and makes it past the silver grey car of Damien Verleyen 444 we go on board with there but back to the race leaders this has been an absolute cracker between these two it could have been a three-way scrap Silvano Kera still in third but at the moment we're focused on the lead and the fastest man on tracks the second place car of David Da Costa, who goes for the lead. Da Costa, down the inside line. Here he comes, down the gears, hard on the brakes, turn left, into the hairpin, gets it crossed up. Oh, and that surely is going to lose it. Now, was there contact there, or did he throw it away on his own? Theo Berg's through, and looking for a second win. Da Costa recovers. Silvano Kera's coming up to challenge for second place. Is he going to be able to get it? I think that Da Costa's got back on the gas real quickly, down into Yentwood corner. Here's the view from Damien Villain once again. Car 444 right in the mix. As we said, some great battles going on right the way through the field. Damien's in the silver grey car. Up ahead of him, Rob Baker and car number two, Paul Bates. Those cars scrapping over uh, fifth position at the moment. So Damien have a good... Just still just the one uh, retirement in, in our part of the race, which is actually Craig. Villay and having a, a very good look there and you can see Theo Berg just going out of shot the race leader and the battle on for second place David Da Costa is still there at the moment but here comes Silvano is he going to try and brave it on the outside no he's a little bit too far back to come into the hairpin and they might go for the switch back and try and nip up the inside but then he's faced with the outside for the next corner look how hard he's working the wheel tiny bit of understeer there as he comes out of the out of the hairpin and Theo Berg down the road this is the view from Silvano. Still there in that third place. 
And Theo Berg, it's going to be a, a perfect start to the season for him with pole position in the first race. Didn't, hasn't had the, the fastest lap, so he's got out in front, started to get away. Back with the scrap for fourth position. Damien Villay had still chasing the car of Paul Bates in front. Great driver's view of going through the Brook S's here. And there is uh, Damien looking up the inside of Paul Bates. So Bates in the number two car, the green machine, goes to the outside line. Damien's going to go for the run as well. And he will be looking to try and carry the speed onto the last lap. You saw the board going out there from the starting gantry here at Rockingham. So it's just over two miles to go for those cars. Meanwhile, the top three look settled at the moment. Silvano Cara there in third. David Da Costa ahead of him. And Theo Berg is having a wonderful weekend so far. Still out front. This is the view from the third place car through Piff Path, which is one of the centre points of the circuit. The halfway point of, of this particular lap here at Rockingham and you can see the Sakers starting to go through Nigel Moore in the Ginetta as well good driving there you can see Silvano puts his indicators on to let the faster cars know that he's moving to the outside of the circuit they've proved absolutely no problem at all it's Paul Rose incidentally in the Saker sports car he's the overall leader of the Euro Saloon and sports car race so those two having a great dice and hats off to the 4-2 Cup guys for not interfering with that here we go back on board with David Da Costa fastest man on circuit David Da Costa again so a 154.6 for him but it's Theo Berg that's going to make it 2 out of 2 Da Costa's chasing and he's closed up over the last couple of laps but he hasn't been able to do anything about it and if he hadn't have had that moment earlier on, it could possibly have been a win for him. Here's the view from Silvano as we go back and see the chequered flag. It's win number two. Theo Berg wins it. Da Costa, flash of the lights. He's very happy indeed with second place. Silvano Cara takes third. Berg, Da Costa, Cara, they're the top three. David Da Costa again getting past his lap. David Nash got the best of that battle for fourth place. Ahead of Rob Baker, Damien Valleyan comes home in sixth with Paul Bates, James Palmer in eighth and Chris Gill in ninth position. So Theo, an exciting first race of the day out there. Was it good for you? Yeah, it was for, for me a, a nice race. We have a, a little fight. I don't understand. Uh, I can, can not very good English. Just with the briefing yesterday, I hadn't understand we had a flying start together. It's all. They all came around, but uh, I managed it. Is it nice to be able to ha enjoy the fun of overtaking out there? Yeah, yeah. There's more fun than, than driving alone. This, uh, no, this, uh, this pretty nice to to drive with it. You do it again later? I think about. It, yeah. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Thank. So David, racing wheel to wheel in a championship like this is it good fun? Oui, euh, donc euh, on est venu en Angleterre ici pour, euh, pour voir un petit peu le championnat euh, par rapport à la Belgique et bon, je trouve que c'est franchement la bagarre euh, à nous trois là qu'on a, qu a vécu tout à l'heure, euh, c'était exceptionnel. And how does the Rockingham circuit compare to racing out in Europe? Ben, le, le circuit à Rockingham, il est vraiment extraordinaire. On a un plus beau circuit, enfin on a le plus beau circuit en Belgique, mais euh, ici ça reflète vraiment des états unis c'est pas mal, c'est super. Well, hopefully you'll have a good race in the second one. Good luck. Thank you. So Silvano, a close race out there. Was it good fighting with your opponents? Yes, yes. Um, I like very much the championship Smart Cup. Uh, the old car is the same and uh, the fight is very in the same seconds, uh, wheels to wheels. And uh, in, in England, the motorsports is the very best of uh, Europe for me. Jeff, part of uh, Ashley's team, uh, but I believe by day you're a uh, smart car dealer, uh, and yet obviously you follow this motorsport quite closely. I'm very passionate about the cars, and um, I've had a lot of big cars in, in the past, and then um, had my first smart in 1999, and then when we discovered um, that there was a race series, obviously buying and selling smart cars, um, it was a natural progression for us to look at this as a, as a form of, of improving the business profile, but also just so much fun. Um, being of the slightly larger size, it's, it's slightly better to have a, a lighter driver in there. Um, and also it's great to be able to give the opportunity for a driver um, to get in a car that we can help sponsor him with uh, and see him progress with his career. 
smart cars themselves seem very adaptable uh, for the race circuit. Very much so. I mean, we turned up on a couple of track days uh, and it's very funny to watch people's reaction when you turn up with a smart car on a trailer and everybody's sort of almost sort of giggling and laughing and wondering what's going on, thinking it'd be a mobile chicane. And then next thing you know, when you go around the outside of them on bends, they're kind of rather confused. And then by the end of the day, they're sort of coming up to you and wondering what on earth you've got underneath the back. And then you turn around and say, well, it's actually pretty much a standard engine and standard car. They're sort of all quite shocked, really. We can go around the whole day um, on the same brakes, the same tyres, no issues. We can go around for literally do a full tank without having to come in. Welcome back to Rockingham. It's Theo Berg starting in pole position on this one. David De Costa second, Silvano Kera in third. Ashley Craig slated to take the race, but sadly couldn't get the car out in time. So it's a nine-car field and a great start from Theo Berg. Much happier, as you heard about the standing start. And through he goes into turn one. Just keeping her eyes on the battle of the Brits for third position, Silvano Kera. So Silvano Kera's third, the Brits squabbling over fourth place. And James Nash coming up to try and take that from Paul Bates in green, who holds fourth position at the moment. The lead trio already at the hairpin. Fourth, fifth and sixth chasing Damien Verlaine behind them. So David Nash loses out just a little bit there, but it's Paul Bates that holds the top British lob. Sure, our European colleagues won't mind us having a little bit of a Brit moment, focusing on the battle between the British drivers. It's Theo Berg out front from David Da Costa. Silvano Kera is third. So this is the opening lap. If you're wondering why we had a standing start for this one, the track time for the 4-2 Cup being shared over the weekend. We had two races with the Euro Saloon and Sports Car Championship, which enjoy rolling starts. And this third race, not many other um, cars have three races a weekend, but we do. And the third race shared with the Alpha Shop Alfa Romeo Championship. And they have a standing start. So it's added a real bit of variety in the championship. So if you're looking for variety, fun and excitement, this is the place to go. Theo Berg certainly making the most of that uh, clutch start as James Palmer looks for the lead. Palmer looking, well, the lead of the Brits anyway. Fourth position overall. Palmer's through on the inside. I need to make it clear there isn't a separate class for the British drivers. Um, it is one race, but we're just focused on who's going to be the leading Brit here as they go down school straight. And at the moment, Paul Bates looking at the outside line, but Palmer's going to have the correct line as they come into the Brook S's. David Nash is there at the moment running in sixth position with Damien Verleyen behind him in the 444 car. Up over the line, about half a length of a straight at the moment, the leading European drivers have got, and it's still Theo Berg out front and James Palmer in fourth, ahead of Paul Bates. Then it's Nash, Verleyen, Chris Gill uh, is in the mix as well. Rob Baker, I think, having problems in the 462 car. And indeed, just confirmation coming through that Rob has sadly gone into retirement. And there's a challenge on here as David Nash goes through and takes fifth position away from Paul Bates. And now Damien Verlaine coming up the inside as well. I think Damien's a, a wee bit too far back in the silver car to effect the challenge to go into Yentworth, the right-hand corner. And then it's another right-hander round into Chapman Curve. From there into the halfway point of the lap, into Piff Paff and then back around to Steel Straight and Greystones, which they've got to come to yet. James Palmer looking pretty comfortable at the moment in fourth place, starting to build a bit of a lead over David Nash. And you can see the lead three cars, the length of Steel Straight ahead of the battle for fourth. Two-way scrap at the moment, David Nash trying to close in on James Palmer those two breaking clear of Paul Bates at the moment this is a slightly longer race this one uh, the previous two races 20 minutes and you get a few extra uh, minutes in this one to go with the Alphas so it's terrific value for money and I said if you want variety and fun variety coming through the different starts that are effective change for fourth place so David Nash goes through in the 37 car very neat manoeuvre from the Redditch base driver so David Nash is through and up into fourth place James Palmer down to fifth then 
it's Paul Bates. Damien Verlaine keeping him honest at the moment. They go up across the line. The lap times here have been uh, a little bit faster than we had in qualifying yesterday. So it's been a good performance all round by the drivers. David De Costa grabbing two fastest laps in the first two races, but this time Theo Berg out front seems to be the pace setter. So he didn't need to get quicker with two wins, but he is doing that. So through they come again. David Nash, fourth position. Fifth place, James Palmer. And we've got a scrap on for six. Damien Villain again. Came offline a little bit early. Was thinking about going down. You can see what the drivers were saying about being on the outside of the car. Doesn't work particularly well on the right-handers for the Belgian drivers, but on the majority of the other corners, the uh, weight on the right part of the car. Of course, you can set the car up to, to get around that. It's not a big problem. A bit of a lock-up there from Nash as he goes through, goes into Graceland. Here's our race leader, Theo Berg. Still there. David De Costa has had a really good weekend. We've seen spins, we've seen recovery from it, and that's the great thing about these cars. You could bring them back from that. Mixing it with the uh, Fiat. So I think that's uh, Stephen O'Brien in the Fiat Punto of Bath. So the smart cars mixing it, one of the newcomers in the Alpha Championship. He's running in the invitation class for the Alphas. And Nash now clearing fourth position. He's, he's got away from James Palmer. Let's have a look and see if we can see, as they go around turn one, what the gap is. And in fact, Palmer being passed by Damien Verleyen. So Damien having a good go, but Palmer hangs on to it. Down behind them, it's Paul Bates still there in the green car in seventh position. So Damien's managed to pick one of them off. And, uh, of course, his aim will be to try and catch up with his mainland European counterparts. Little lock-up there, so the driver's still very much on the limit here. We're trying to catch up, but we'll see whether Paul Bates can snatch the position back from Damien Villain. They won't want to battle too hard. Look at that lock-up again from Bates, really trying hard. And Damien Villain making things look a little bit simpler. He's just picking them off one by one. That was a real lock-up from Bates. Back to Theo Berg in the race lead. Is he pulling away? The answer is no, he's not. David De Costa still there in the 451 car, running in second place. Doesn't seem to have the response in terms of lap times to be able to do anything about that. Damien Vallejo out of the hairpin. Those two have got past James Palmer now, so James has dropped back a little bit. He's going to be disappointed about that. Damien Vallejo making it uh, first, second, third and fifth at the moment for the Europeans. There is the fourth driver going for Damien loses it, going into the... Oh, and up into the air and over the tyres. That could have been a lot worse, but I'm sure Damien's not going to be overly happy about that. James Palmer has to squeeze through with a couple of the Alphas. Well, that sadly is going to put Damien Villain out of the race, so... Paul Bates has now got ahead of David Nash. So at the moment it's Berg, De Costa, Kara. Top Brit is Paul Bates in the number two car. And then David Nash. There's David Nash in the black and gold car. And I'm just looking back to see whether we can spot James Palmer. I'll tell you what, uh, Paul Bates might not hang on to the position if he continues locking up like that. He really is working the car hard. So, great driving from David Nash. Very clear indication there of which way he wanted the Alpha to go. And the Alpha makes his way past. It's been a very long weekend here for the 4-2 Cup, guys. And uh, loads of track time, loads of fun being had on track. Uh, majority of the cars have made it through. I think the only mechanical problem we've had was uh, Ashley Craig's car, which was a borrowed car. He wasn't familiar with it. But now on to the last lap. This one hasn't missed a beat all weekend. Pole position in the first race, two wins. And uh, thus far, and he's looking for that third race win now. Theo Berg, fastest lap of the race in this one. Only a second or so clear of David De Costa. Let's see if we can see De Costa. Um, in the back of the uh, shot. So I said a second or so, it's actually 10 seconds back at the moment. Checking out the gap between uh, two different drivers. 
455. That's the third man, Silvano Cara. So he's had a, an entertaining weekend as well. But back with the leader through the last couple of corners here at Rockingham to wind up the first of three weekends of action here in the UK for the 4-2 Cup. And it's a win for the visitor. Theo Berg takes the chequered flag. There he is, three out of three for him. David De Costa, 10 seconds back in second place. So that's confirmation of that. Theo got the fastest lap there as well. Savannah Kerr takes third. Paul Bates was top Brit. He finishes fourth with David Nash. James Palmer comes home in sixth with Chris Gill in seventh. Your European cousins really do seem to set the standard when they come over here, don't they? Uh, yes, they are, but to be fair, they are pretty good drivers. And uh, our better drivers, aren't, they're doing something else at the moment, so to put it. So I might have to uh, coast a few over just to, get, <laughs> just to get the British back up there, if you know what I mean. But it's certainly a good season ahead for you guys. I mean, you've got quite a nice tour lined up. Yeah, no, we're quite lucky, really, because we, we can use their package as well as our package. Um, so basically, our lineup so far has been Zolder. We've come to Rockingham, then we've got Mate, um in Belgium, then we go to Zandervoort. I don't know if I said it correctly, I normally don't. Um, and then we come back to Snetterton and then Brands Hatch at the end. Um, and the cream, cream really is uh, the 24 hour after that at Spa. So we do a 24 hour with the uh, two CVs, which is really good fun. No peace for the wicked then for you this season? Uh, well, we've done 10 races last year, so we're doing seven this year, so it's, <laughs> it's sort of a little bit better. <laughs> Thanks very much, James. Good luck. Thank you. A good opening to the season then for the 4-2 cars. Join us next time because that's it for Rockingham. We're going to go to Brands Hatch and action from the British Truck Racing Association. A change in size, but the action's going to be just as good. Join us at Brands Hatch next time. <laughs>